Hello again. My name is Adrian Torres. I teach Spanish and ballroom dancing at Xavier College Prep High School in Palm Desert, California. Today we're going to explore a tool called Poll Everywhere. Poll Everywhere is an online polling platform that allows you to get group feedback on the spot. This tool lets you get a pulse of where students are at any step of the learning process. It's easy. You just ask your group or class a question, you collect the responses, and then you discuss the results. This is a great way to break the ice with students by asking a fun, engaging question. More importantly, you can assess what students know at the start of a lesson, throughout a lesson, and at the end of a lesson. All students need is a phone, just like this. It can be a smartphone, and yes, even a good old-fashioned flip phone. Uh, students can also use a tablet device or a computer in order to submit their responses. Students can respond by sending an SMS, a text message through their cell phone. Students can also access the poll by going to your built-in polling page that you get uh, with your account for Poll Everywhere. And students can also access the poll by clicking on a private link sent to them by you, the teacher. Poll Everywhere integrates with several learning management systems like Blackboard, Brightspace, Canvas, Moodle, and Sakai. Uh, you can also download plugins and extensions to work with um, PowerPoint, Keynotes, and Google Slides. Poll Everywhere is, again, pretty easy to use. You can quickly create and facilitate a mobile poll or a web poll. So let's get started. Let's take a look at Poll Everywhere. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to open a tab on your browser and go to polleverywhere.com. It'll take you to this main page. So a couple of things I wanna point out before you actually create an account. Um, let's take a look at pricing. There's, for the most part, we're working with K-12. So you want to take a look at the K-12 options. Again, uh, I'm all about the freemium. Uh, the free version allows you to create unlimited polls, unlimited questions. You can have up to 40 students respond to a question at one time, and you have access to customer support, frequently asked questions, uh, videos, and webinars. Now, there's a premium version that costs $50 a year. Uh, you get a little bit more for, for that price. You get, again, still unlimited questions, same audience size per poll, but you also get customer support through email um, if you have any questions. You're also able to access reports um, that you, you can't access in the free version, and you can actually choose your own username um, as part of uh, the private URL link that you would use to send, message, uh, send polls to your students. Now, if your school or district decides to, uh, to apply for an account or subscribe to an account, um, you get more bells and whistles here. Again, unlimited questions you can ask students. The audience number increases drastically to 200. You, not only do you get access to the resources online and email support, but you can also pick up the phone and get customer support uh, via telephone. Um, you can also, just like the, the paid version, the premium version, get access to specific reports, generate personal URL and username, and you can actually also share your account with other educators. Uh, again, that's one of the cool perks of being associated with, uh, with a school or district account. Okay, now if you click on the apps, you can see that you can download a program or an extension uh, to integrate Poll Everywhere into your PowerPoint presentations for Mac or PC, um, as well as for Keynote and Google Slides. And lastly, in terms of resources, there are a lot of resources available here. Um, you have a lot of uh, searchable items. If you need to troubleshoot anything uh, through the support center, frequently asked questions. There are a lot of instructional videos, as well as signups for webinars. Uh, detailed step-by-step -step guides, written instructions, as well as case studies as to how to use Poll Everywhere. I'm going to click on this just to show you. Uh, this is a great resource and I highly recommend when you have time to take a look at this. Uh, you get to see how, you can read about how Poll Everywhere is used in the realm of business, in the realm of events, um, and for our context, education. There's some really good articles here put put out by several universities, several institutions. So again, when you have a moment, take a look at these resources. All right, let's get started. First off, we need to create an account. So you do that by clicking sign up. You can sign up as a presenter or as a participant. For our context, we're gonna be presenting, so you're gonna wanna click on sign up as a presenter. Uh, you can sign up using your Google credential or 
create uh, an account with uh, your first, last name, email address, create a password. Okay, since I already have an account, I'm going to just log in. I'm going to go to the upper right-hand corner. I can enter my email or username. I can sign in with Google. I can even sign in with Apple. So I'm using my school Gmail account to log in to poll everywhere. And here we go. Okay, so your main page, this is your main landing page, and it's going to default to any poll that you've made. So here we go. I can see a list of all the polls that I've made here. So this is where you get started. The upper right-hand corner is your user menu. I'm gonna click on this just for a quick sec. You have access to login out. Uh, you can uh, see different accounts, admin, and information settings and then the my settings is something that I want to just take you walk you through um, to get started here so to access that uh, personal polling page that I mentioned that's built into your accounts uh, it's pretty easy to access it's pollev.com forward slash and then your username so this is where um, it defaults to a combination of first name last name and some numbers based on the information you you gave the system when you first created your account. You can change that. Um, for my context, I used XCPHS for Xavier College Prep High School, first initial last name. As more and more faculty start to incorporate Poll Everywhere in their instruction, uh, students are having to access some of these teacher polling pages. And so to make it a little easier for everyone, I, I recommend creating something somewhat uniform that's easy for students to remember. Uh, and adapt based on the teacher that is prompting a poll. Uh, if you need to change your email address, password, uh, any of this information here, you can go ahead and modify. Uh, you can also receive emails from uh, Poll Everywhere. You can click to uh, see to what degree you want to receive any information. Part of my settings also includes activity settings. So uh, I want to make sure that I always prompt students to enter a screen name before they actually engage in the polling process. I always also always encourage them to use their first name, last name so that I can trace uh, who submitted what. If you're going to use a poll as something that you're going to grade, this is really important. Um, also, you can actually set specific settings to all of your polls, like being able to change an answer once you've submitted it. Um, if you're going to enable a web response versus a text message response, um, and whether or not to you automatically show instructions or show results. Now, I usually tend to change this up based on the question that I'm asking and where I have it placed uh, in my instructional sequence for the day. So I usually leave these at no default set because I'm going to change these on a poll to poll basis. Uh, it's important for you to be aware that if, you're, if you want to set a default for any of these items, you can easily do so. Also, it's important to know that the default activation period for a poll is three hours. You can change this to be open to a day, a week, or 30 days. If you happen to have a template that works for you and you're gonna use it on a regular basis, you can actually set uh, a template for your polls. And then lastly, um, from your My Settings section, you have this area for connecting accounts. I've downloaded the Chrome extension for Poll Everywhere, so you can see here that my Google is connected to my Poll Everywhere. If I want to disconnect that, I would just simply click Disconnect. Alrighty, uh, next I wanna to go to my account admin. Here is the LMS integration. When you click on this, um, you can see that Poll Everywhere integrates with, uh, with several, LMS, several LMSs. Um, this is not something that is free and, and automatic. You do need to contact sales in order to figure out pricing for your institution uh, and the process of making Poll Everywhere parlay with your LMS. Okay, so those are just some of the nuts and bolts about getting things set up. I'm going to go to my polls, and we're going to get started with creating our first poll. Okay, so I'm going to click on Create. Upper left hand corner, uh, click on the create button and you will see that you have several options for creating a polling question. You can create a multiple choice question. Uh, you can uh, create a board cloud. 
Um, you can do a question and answer. You can add an image. You can have students click on an image as part of, uh, of a response. Uh, you can create, you can couple two, three, four question types and create a survey. Uh, you can have open-ended questions. Uh, be careful because whenever you have an open-ended question, uh, make sure that what uh, you provide very uh, clear instructions to your students because anything that they text or enter will be visible to anybody that is taking that poll. Uh, just be mindful of that. Um, and then if you click on more, you have a lot of other options. Um, icebreakers, donut charts, uh, and nut votes. And this is really neat. Um, this is fantastic for uh, if, you, if you want to get feedback from students as to what is the topic you want to uh, study most in preparation for the final exam, uh, you can have students submit open-ended responses. And then based on what is presented, students can then like the, some of those responses. And then you begin to see a shift in um, uh, and ranking or what is most important for the overall group. So that's a really neat uh, question type to answer. Emotional skills, we want to make sure that we're being mindful of our students' social emotional learning. And so, you know, how do you feel today? Um, I like the question, how do you feel um, as you're about to take this assessment? And then at the end of the assessment, how do you feel after having taken the assessment? Um, and then I'll, a lot of times we'll do a, a word cloud to solicit what specifically students felt they were uh, less prepared for as, um, as a way to guide my next steps in, 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 my, in my curriculum. The presentation feedback is one of my favorite types of questions. Uh, this is fantastic for getting feedback on, um, on a lesson as well as on a presentation. So let's say you have students who are going to do a, a presentation and you want, your, you want students to give peer feedback. You can have students on the, on the fly uh, give the presenter or presenters uh, constructive feedback as to how things went. So starting off by how would you rate the content? How would you rate the presenter or presenters? What did you like most about this session? How would you improve the session? Of course, you can modify this to meet your needs, but this is a really good way for the presenter or presenters to get feedback on the spot. Again, great for student presentations. Um, for faculty, if you're doing a tuning protocol, this is a wonderful way of being able to uh, give feedback and guide the process. Uh, so these are just some of the ways that you can utilize uh, or you can set up a polling question. We're gonna just go ahead and start off by doing a simple multiple choice question. Who is the artist represented in this self? Portraits. And make sure I get this right. And I'm I can do first option. I'm going to say Salvador. Salvador Dali. I'm going to say Diego Rivera. I'm going to say Fernando Botero. Uh, and we'll leave it at that. Okay, so. Those are my options. Question, my, my options. If I wanted to, I could import an image and have an image be one of the options that is selected. If I wanna add more options, I can add a fourth, a fifth uh, choice. You can just click on the little icon, the trash icon to delete that. And once you are ready, you would click on the create button. So I'm gonna hit create button. We have our first poll. Now, it's not finished quite yet, but here you can see uh, what this looks like. This is your edit mode. So you, you selected a question type. You've entered the initial question, and now you're going to uh, do some fine tuning to the question. So I'm gonna just click on, on full screen here so you can see what this looks like for the students. So who is the artist represented in the self-portrait? You have Salvador Dali, A, Diego Rivera, B, Fernando Botero, C. So uh, my first question is, where's the self-portrait? Now, I can do a couple of things. I can go to uh, visual settings, and I can, from my settings, scroll down to where it says background, and I can import an image to create a flat background. I can also go back to the 
edit mode down here in the bottom right. And when I'm asking the question, who is the artist representing this self portrait? I can actually click on upload image, which is what I should have done from the very beginning. Select the image that is associated with my question and wait for the image to upload. I see a little thumbnail there and I'm going to hit save in the bottom right. And this is what my poll looks like now when I answer full screen. You can see that I have a question, who is the artist represented in this self-portrait? Option A, option B, option C, here is a self-portrait. Now you're gonna also notice that there are instructions in the upper section here. The students have different options for responding. If they have a device that has a web browser, uh, they would go to polev.com forward slash XCPHS, A Torres, first initial last name, Adrian Torres, or uh, they can text XCPHS A Torres to this number. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a bit. Um, and so once they join, students will get a text message indicating they have joined the class, they have joined the poll, and then they can just simply text a, B, or C as the option, and this will populate automatically. Uh, so I'm going to exit the full screen mode and come back to the visual settings. Again, you can pick a color scheme. You can change uh, the color of, of the words, of the axes, uh, and just play around with this. You can make this meet your needs. Okay, so we've finished making changes to our visual settings. Make sure you hit save, that's gonna be important. Let's now focus our attention to the options presented to us on the right-hand side. You have a configure tab, a test tab, and a present tab. So let's configure this poll for our students. So how people can respond. When you click on this, uh, you can activate two ways of submitting responses. Uh, via the web, meaning students can go to this poll website and students can log in through a device that has a web browser. Students can also respond by text message. So there are two ways of approaching the text message feature. You can have students enter the, the teacher's username and text that to this code, 37607. Um, and students will be prompted to, for option, the first option, have an A, second option, have a B, third option, be a C. You can have these be numbers as well. Um, so you, you have that flexibility. Again, the options are gonna be A, B, C, D, E, F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, you can change that here. You can also have a specific text code for each response. You can go to full screen so you can see this. If I am going to respond via cell phone uh, through SMS, I would text to this number, 37607. I would text my the numbers that correlate to the response I want to submit. Uh, so that is one option you have for making sure that students uh, submit their, their response. Again, alternatively, you can make it so that, I'll go to full screen. Students have access to the poll by entering your username, uh, texting your username to 37607. And then from there, all of the submissions are uh, an A, B, C option. This might be a little easier. There's less room for error. Um, at the same time, once a student enters your polling space, even if they leave your polling space, uh, they leave the classroom physically, they might still be logged into the polling space. And so if you have uh, your next period come in and you're gonna, you're gonna run the exact same poll, theoretically a student who is now in math class can actually uh, change their response, submit another response, undo their response, which will um, alter what is coming in and what you're seeing live with, uh, with a different class. So just be mindful of that. Uh, let's exit full screen. Okay, so these are the options for how to get responses. If you want to, if all students have a, a device that connects to the web, you can just deactivate the text message and direct all students to go to your polling page. Uh, you can also uh, have students just respond via text message. So you have those two options. I'm gonna leave both of those activated. 
audience restrictions. So um, I'm not going to restrict this to anybody. I don't have the option to unrestrict. And I want to make sure that I prompt students to submit a screen name. I want to know who is responding. Uh, you can make this completely anonymous. Um, I'm personally not a fan of that. I want to have some accountability uh, in student response. So I am going to ask that students uh, provide a screen name. Uh, I request that they answer first and last name as some of this can be used as um, formative assessments. And then your response settings. Here is where you have some more flexibility. Uh, you can allow the participants to respond multiple times, or just one time. You can reset it to just two or three, four times, or, or leave, it, leave it open. Um, there are certain types of questions where you're going to want to leave it open, and I'll show you an example of that in just a bit. Uh, each option can be selected a specific number of times or an unlimited, unlimited number of times. You can decide whether or not you want to allow your students to change their answer or not. Um, and, and so those are the, the basic uh, response settings that you can set. Again, I like to make sure that based on the question type and what I'm seeking on behalf of the students, I, I like to modify this on a, on a poll to poll question basis. I like to keep, um, I like to set these settings uh, based on the context of, of, of the question, based on the question type, and just what kind of feedback I want to get from my students. So. If you recall, when you go to your uh, accounts admin, you can set defaults for all of your polling questions. Again, uh, just to make sure that you are most flexible, that you have flexibility with, uh, with this, um, I, would, I would leave those uh, defaults open so that you can modify this as you see best fit. Okay, so this is setting up, configuring your poll. Um, I am going to now test my poll. So I'm going to move this over here. Uh, and we have a simulation of what this looks like through the web version as well as the text version. So uh, for the web version first, I'm going to first and foremost, if this is not active, the poll is not open so nobody can respond. If I activate the poll, that means that I can now um, accept responses. So the question is who was the first who is the artist represented in the self-portrait? You can respond once. Um, I am going to remember what I learned in this course about characteristics of uh, this artist. So I'm going to say Fernando Botero. Now, you saw that nothing happened here. I can give students a minute, 90 seconds, 15 seconds to uh, answer. And then when I'm ready to reveal, the responses, I would click on the show responses. And so you can see here, I'm going to clear my response. Let's say, let's say I initially said Salvador Dali. Uh, you can see that that changes automatically. It's live. And I go, oh, wait, never mind. No, Dali was that dude who, uh, who had the, the funky mustache. Oh, man. Uh, and I can't undo my response in this case. I'll get it right next time. Okay, uh, so this is an example of what the question looks like on a mobile device. Uh, let's take a look at what this looks like via text. So via text here, uh, your audience texts this, and this is again the, the, polling, um, the polling address for this poll to this generic number. So I am texting this number, 37607, and I'm going to X, C P H S A T O R R E S. I'm going to text that, and this is going to now activate my polling capabilities on my on my uh, phone. So it says you've joined Adrian Torres' session. When you're done, type leave or reply leave. So at the end of class, I want to make sure that as a student user, I um, in this text conversation type in leave and and hit send, and this will remove me from uh, this poll. Okay, so let's say I'm going to respond here, and I know who this is. Uh, this is Fernando Botero. And as I enter my response, um, it's supposed to populate. I can clear my response. Um, and I'm going to uh, answer the correct answer, Salvador Dali. I mean, sorry, uh, Fernando Botero. And so, uh, again, as <coughs> students respond, uh, you can see the questions coming through. 
Um, I'm on my smartphone at the moment, and I'm going to indicate Diego Rivera. That's through the poll. And I'm going to now indicate through text. Um, I'm going to type in another response. So you can see that um, Diego Rivera went down by a little bit, and Fernando Botero remained where it is. I just submitted another response for Fernando Botero. Okay, that's what this looks like in terms of testing out your poll to see how it works. Um, once you are ready, uh, you could go to present and you click on full screen uh, and make sure that, that you've clicked on the activate. And if you want to show responses, you would click on show responses. Full screen automatically um, turns on the poll for you. You can send this as a link, send it through email or even social media. Okay, so I'm going to enter the full screen mode. And again, here's what it looks like. If you want to hide your responses um, and wait for students to respond. A couple of tips for uh, when you're going to get started. I want to make sure that you create uh, some, some time to explain to students how this works. Again, guide them to if they're using a device that has uh, a browser, you can invite them to go to pollev.com forward slash uh, your username. They can also, if they're using a cell phone, text this number 37607 and make sure that they text your username to this number. This will activate um, their polling capabilities for this poll. You want to make sure that you do a practice run before you ever do anything that is that might count for something. Uh, so again, just making sure that you slowly get students accustomed to using Poll Everywhere. Uh, it, once you do it several times, it, it becomes second nature, but it, it can be a little tricky uh, your first couple of times. Uh, don't be scared to uh, give students time. I know a lot of times when uh, there's silence in the room, it can make people uncomfortable. Uh, Give students uh, a minute to 90 seconds the first few times just to make sure that they're all on the same page, uh, that they all are able to connect to the poll and submit a response. Um, thereafter, feel free to shift that to a, a smaller uh, amount of time. You know, 30 seconds might be good as you continue from there. Uh, but also as your students become better versed in using Poll Everywhere and you become uh, better at presenting with Poll Everywhere, uh, you might want to reduce that. Uh, again, it just you want to make sure you respond to to the learning curve of of your students. Also, um, I recommend piecing out uh, how often you incorporate a poll. I know the tendency is to want to give a series of questions back to back, back to back. Uh, rapid fire questions uh, can actually get a little boring. Again, you want to make sure that you're engaging students. Uh, that also uh, includes being able to mix it up with something that's a little silly from time to time. Uh, but also nothing that will derail them and get their minds wandering off in a different direction. Uh, sometimes uh, I know that in the classroom, I tend to have a little jar of hard candy. Uh, it's tough when you're on uh, in a virtual classroom. That may not always be possible, but uh, if you want to incentivize any of this, please feel free to consider that. Uh, make sure that students understand if they're going to use the cell phone option, the text option, uh, there may be fees that that apply based on the carrier and the individual student's uh, student cell phone plan. So many students now subscribe to uh, unlimited plans. Most carriers are moving in that, that direction. That's not always the case, so just be mindful of that. Um, also, make sure that students know that in terms of privacy, nobody can see their phone number if they're going to use a text option. Some students and parents might be a little worried about that. Also mentioned that capitalization doesn't matter um, whenever submitting a response to poll everywhere. However, spelling is important um, and spaces are important. So make sure that, that um, students are aware of that. Uh, a third option is downloading the Poll Everywhere app. And that is an app that can be downloaded on the Android or Apple App Store. Uh, easy download and is yet a third way of accessing polls. Okay, so I'm going to exit the full screen mode here. Again, let's say we've done a poll um, and you have your responses. Fantastic. You can then talk about, okay, what were the characteristics of, of Salvador Dali? Let's talk about what was the focus of Diego Rivera's work? Um, what are the characteristics of Botero's work? 
okay, so now as we reviewed that, what's our consensus? Let's let's try that again. Everybody respond uh, one second time, and then hopefully uh, you've cleared your responses. This is active. You get a second run of of this question of this poll, and hopefully more students will will remember. Oh yeah, this is this is both that. Again, this is just one way of uh, uh, asking a question. I'm going to move on to another question that I have here uh, that's built in. Again, you can simply ask Fernando Botero es de Cuba, Colombia, Costa Rica. Uh, you've noticed that I've there's a there's an image in the background. Um, the way I did that, I mentioned earlier, um, I can go to my visual settings. And under background, uh, I imported an image. It can be a little tricky as to what section of the uh, of the image is is shown. You can also check uh, how dark you want that background to be. So if you want it to be just more like a watermark, uh, you can have it be the lowest uh, opacity. If you want it to be a little more pronounced, you can um, you can up that. But then you run into uh, some of your text not being visible. You can change the color of the text uh, here in these settings, uh, but again, the quick and easiest way is to just keep it um, at low op opacity. Okay, so uh, here's a, another example of a multiple choice question. Okay, so we're going to activate this next uh, section, um, and we have a survey here uh, that is a grouping of two or more questions. So. Let's say this question indicates which state has the highest rate of COVID-19. Um, I can, again, choose to show responses or not show responses, um, just so you can see students responding live um, from my mobile device. Now, I can't, this is not a question that can actually be responded to via text. However, if there is a web browser from my Safari or Chrome, web browser on my smartphone, I can uh, respond to this by just tapping. So I'm going to start to tap on my smartphone. And you can see Washington um, is blowing up and the whole New York area starting to add more there, uh, a little bit in Southern California. And I'm going to maybe sprinkle some in Texas in the Chicago area. Um, whoops, going for Chicago. Clear it and keep this ready for your next class. The next question is, when thinking about COVID-19, what worries come to mind? Now, this question is a word cloud. So I'm going to provide instructions here. And as I enter them on my cell phone, you can show responses. As more responses come, come in, you're gonna see the focus shift a little bit. So this is live and a word cloud is generated on the spot. Again, this is a great way to um, get a conversation going. Um, again, and you can respond, contribute to a word cloud either via text, via the app or via a web browser. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next question. This is a neat, uh, a neat question. This is a ranking question. So the question that I ask is, ¿Cuál comida es tu favorita? Uh, which meal is your favorite? Students will go to the, the web poll and rank these. So they'll place them in order from top to bottom, and then they'll submit those responses. And whichever is the winner for number one will rise to the top to be in first place, uh, runner up, second place, and then um, uh, the least favorite will be in third place. Again, this is a, a good way to, for my context of teaching Spanish, then be able to jump into, okay, so uh, why, uh, what are some foods that, that are, are typical of dinner versus breakfast? Uh, a good way to recap the vocabulary. Um, another way of approaching this is, let's say you want to give student choice as to what topic you want to explore next. Um, and you're in, <laughs> in a place where you're kind of indifferent. There's flexibility. Are we gonna move in the direction of clothing, we're gonna move in the direction of home, we're gonna move in the direction of um, of chores. Again, that's just, uh, those are topics that I cover toward the end of my Spanish one class. Um, or what are some topics we want to discuss at our next meeting? What are, the, what are the most urgent questions? And so based on group ranking, you can make decisions based on what the group feels is most important. 
Okay, um, there's another question here that um, I really like. Um, now, we saw this earlier. So this is going to be a survey. I'm gonna click on Start Survey, and I'm gonna to go to Present View. And I'm gonna to go to Full Screen. So right before an exam, I like to get students' perspective as to how they're feeling. Um, so it's test time, it's the morning of or the day before. Um, actually, it's the morning of. And how do you feel today as you get ready to take this exam? So you want, you can see uh, students are, you know, maybe feeling pretty good about this. You know, a few that are, are maybe not so ready. And you can see student responses come in. Uh, okay, ask any questions, reach out to some of those who uh, give folks a few minutes, reach out to the folks who responded, hey, maybe not so much, or I'm not sure. Um, and then administer test, assessment is over. Okay, how are you feeling today after having taken the assessment? Um, and then we can see, okay, yeah, uh, I thought I was prepared, uh, not really. Um, okay, so, and this is where students are. This is a wonderful way to then stop, ask questions, um, get feedback, uh, and gauge where students, why students are feeling this way. Um, a follow-up question would be, okay, what are topics you feel you were ill-prepared for in when considering this assessment? And you can do a word cloud, students can contribute anything that they felt was um, a challenge for them. Uh, and this is a great way to then guide uh, the next step in your instructional process and in the learning process. Okay, we need to review these concepts before moving forward or make sure we interweave this as we uh, continue on to, to the next topic or next unit. Mind you, you still need to actually grade the assessments. Uh, and so that will be telling how a student perceived how well they did versus how well they actually did, reconcile those two, and then make decisions based on that information. Okay, so, these are just some ways that you can use poll everywhere. Uh, there are a lot of ways of uh, incorporating this into your process. I'm excited to see how you start using poll everywhere to augment, to modify, or redefine your activities for student learning. I hope this information was useful, and I look forward to seeing some of your work very soon. Bye-bye.